Cassidy. Mike is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Everybody here knows a fellow American struggling with mental health issues. Uh, everybody watching knows. Um, school closures, isolation from the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated, almost concentrated this among those who are younger. According to CDC from, 19, from 2021 to 2022, the percent of teenagers feeling sad or hopeless increased from 37% to 42%. Those seriously considering suicide, seriously considering suicide, goes from 19% to 22. Uh, to say it's troubling is to kind of not have an adequate adjective. This is terrible. The goal of this hearing is how do we improve access to quality mental health care for young people. Now, we must highlight that Congress has done a lot in recent years to improve mental health care and access for children and all Americans. We have walked this ground. We need to see what our recent work has accomplished, need to measure its effectiveness, and then to figure out what gaps remain. Now, just for context, we know this. For decades, the nation's mental health system was dysfunctional, under-resourced, not getting crucial services to Americans refacing mental health issues, especially those in underserved areas. I worked in a hospital for the uninsured and the underinsured for 25 years. I worked with this. Now, before I go on, let me give a shout out to Senator Chris Murphy. He and I in 2015 led the Mental Health Reform Act, an historic bill that overhauled our mental health system to increase access to quality mental health care for all Americans. And I remember Chris at that time saying, Bill, there are some things we agree on, a lot of them, and a few that we disagree. Let's focus on that which we agree and leave the other for another day. And by that, we did something which Lamar Alexander, then the chair of this committee, said he didn't think two freshman senators could do. There's both an insult and a praise in there. <laughs> but we accomplished it. And, and Lamar went on to say it was the most profound, the most profound reform of mental health law in the previous 30 years. He and I were both honored. Now, we teamed up again this past year to reauthorize this and to reform it to better address the needs of Americans. We increased funding for mental health block grants to better serve children at risk for serious mental illness expanded telemental health care and, and promoted the integration of mental health providers into primary care, increased mental health workforce programs, uh, focusing on treating children in underserved populations, and I could go on. Now, additionally, and again, I'm going to give a shout out to Murphy once more, in response to the tragedy in Evaldi, Congress passed the Bipartisan Savers Community Act which invested billions of dollars so that every child and every American had access to mental health care, no matter whether they are in a pediatrician's office, their school, an emergency room, or a community health center. Chris was the lead on that. I had the privilege to work with him, but Congress passed it. The legislation invest, invested $8.6 billion to expand certified community behavioral health clinics to all 50 states, offering 24-7 crisis intervention services, outpatient mental health and substance abuse services, case management, um, increasing access to primary care for Americans, especially those who are lower income and uninsured. It provided $2 billion for school-based mental health treatment to train school personnel to better help students through a crisis, to increase care for children suffering from trauma, to fund prevention programs, to decrease bullying and violence at schools, and much more. Additionally, the Safer Communities Act instructed the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services, both represented here today, to improve guidance to schools, particularly those in local, excuse me, in small or rural communities, to more easily bill Medicaid for school-based mental health services. And we will talk and hear more about that during the first panel. I'm proud of the work that Congress put into this legislation and signed into law, and these achievements show that there's a strong bipartisan support for addressing youth mental health issues. But, and I say this all the time at home, these grants and programs only make a difference if state and local government are aware of them and apply and show local leadership in order to participate. We need this local leadership to use these resources to make sure the assistance reaches those who need it most. What we can't do is pretend that Congress hasn't done anything uh, and that we must start anew. That 
sweeping the deck clean, so to speak, in our minds, not acknowledging the base upon which we build, will create duplicate, inefficient programs, wasting dollars and wasting effort. Uh, by the way, the chair, just echoing the chair, made the point, and I agree wholeheartedly, as you might guess, that the resources Congress appropriates should not be wasted. Now, now Congress can't solve this on its own. Throwing money at an issue without accountability is not the solution. There has to be complete buy-in from the executive, from states, local government, tribal leaders, and community organizations, among others, to make sure these programs work as Congress intended. There is, however, existing legislation up for reauthorization that requires attention. As I mentioned in last week's hearing, the committee has nine health care reauthorizations awaiting for programs that expire in September. One of these is the Support Act, which helps individuals dealing with substance abuse disorder and increases support services for children suffering from trauma. There are more than 50 individual provisions in the Support Act that fall in this committee's jurisdiction. The fact that the committee has two months left to reauthorize the programs and we have not formally considered bipartisan text, let alone mark them up, is concerning. I reiterate that reauthorizing the Support Act and these eight other health-related bills on time, bipartisan, um, must be the committee's top priority. As ranking member of the committee, improving our federal programs so they're more effective and having greater reach is crucial. So let me finish by saying I look forward to hearing from our witnesses as to how we can better address the mental health crisis to make sure that more young people have access to quality mental health and that the resources already allocated are used effectively. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Senator Cassidy. Uh, now we're gonna hear from our witnesses and our first witness will be Vice Admiral uh, Vivek uh, Murthy.